Okay, so a couple of slides here talking about position power as well as personal power. So those are the two types of power, categories of power, I should say, that we can have within an organization or just in general. Um, so power, power exists in every organization and it's really a resource that we have as people. We have position power possibly through the authority granted to us from the organization. And we have personal power if people like us and we're good at something. Uh, personal power is seen as more desirable and we tend to respect people that have personal power more than those who have a position power only. So position power is still useful. It's a resource. You can get things done meaning you can get people to do things they might not have otherwise done. That's what power is, is to get people to do things uh, it, toward, towards a good goal, towards a goal within the organization. So personal power tends to be preferable. That's what we want people to have. You can have both personal and position power within an organization. Um, something to keep in mind is just to use power sparingly. <laughs> So don't, don't go through the organization constantly using your power. If you use position power a lot, meaning telling people what to do, uh, rewarding people, quote-unquote punishing people, uh, or giving them the less desirable task or project or shift, um, you will um, chip away at your p personal power. So people will like you less uh, if you use your authority, basically. Uh, so use it sparingly. Think about power being a right and a, no, being a privilege, not a right that you have. Um, so starting out here saying that empowerment uh, is not power. So we talk about empowerment in other situations and empowerment means that we are delegating uh, decision making and authority to individuals uh, that might not otherwise have that auton autonomy and decision making. So empowerment is not power even though it has you use it uses the word power inside it so personal power i already sort of defined it it's the power of having somebody like you or being an expert at something so ref referent power down here is that that liking part Right, so the referent part right here is the liking part. You have characteristics, you have behaviors that people respond well to. They want to be around you and they like you. And the expert power is that having that knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, that make you an expert in something and also gives you power. So these personal powers reside within you as a person. Charismatic leadership. That's the people who are viewed as um, having that special something that makes them very, very likable. And if you are a person that's viewed as a charismatic leader and you're also in a position of power, um, then you have more powers coming from being charismatic. And when we look at this personal power then, uh, being charismatic, being liked, being knowledgeable. Um, sometimes we don't even know how to define it. So it's that it factor. We just know when a person has it. But when you're asked to describe it, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So that's why some people actually says, well, you know, it's more like a spiritual power or it's something that is just given to the person within them. Uh, but we know that certain behaviors can make you appear more charismatic. So using your voice positively, uh, the pace, intonation of your voice, speaking with your hands, smiling, um, having exerting energy or showing off high energy. So certain things that you do, that you can behaviors that you can take on, can actually make you appear as more charismatic than you may or may not be, right? So in organizations, we have either legitimate leaders, meaning you have the power given to you from the authority. So this is sort of uh, cascading down from top to bottom in terms of um, authority and leadership. So that's the legitimate leader. But we also have informal leaders, and that can be anybody. It can be you, it can be me. So it can be a leader, it can be a follower, it can be a subordinate, it can be a teammate, anybody who doesn't have a necessarily a legitimate 
leaders, leadership position in the organiz organization, but they're still viewed by other people as leaders, so people listen to them. So in that instance, these informal leaders, they tend to be charismatic, they tend to have referent power, and they tend to have expert power. Those powers we tend to respect a little bit more. So a leader cannot be a leader without followers. If you don't have followers that respect you and listen to you, you're not really a leader, uh, regardless of whether you have the authority or not. Um, so uh, that's what this slide is about, saying, well, the followers really have to consent to you being a leader and to your authority. And so even though you might have position power, you might have power to quote-unquote reward and punish, and you have uh, power within the organizational structure you know, as seen by the organizational chart, meaning you have subordinates, you have a team, you have decision-making power. Um, these uh, individuals, if they don't respect you, they may do bare minimum and sometimes not even bare minimum. They might engage in dysfunctional behavior such as retaliation or sabotage uh, and or work slowdown. They might go to HR with grievances. They might go to their union. Um, so resting on position power and authority is not a way to get things done within the organization because you will get behaviors and actions uh, from the subordinates and the team members that are not desirable. So that is position power and we just talked about it uh, on this slide here. So having position power, uh, we know as from my initial slide uh, or, yeah, from the initial slide, what I said, that will diminish your uh, personal power, such as your referent power. Um, so make sure we don't use it too much. Um, so position power is just that. It's granted from top, from the executive leaders, from the governing bodies, whoever is in charge, and it's delegated downwards, right, through the chain of command. Uh, we see it in government, we see it in military organizations, we also see it in for-profit, obviously, but we maybe think more of these government and military organizations as having top-down uh, power or authority. So if you have a legitimate position of power, uh, obviously you can have more potential to influence uh, those below you. So you have more potential to influence the dyadic relationship, meaning you and your subordinate, uh, than if you did not have legitimate power. So legitimate positions gives you some authority, but again, we have to make sure that we don't chip away at our uh, referent and expert power by being too authoritarian. Uh, and because we have power, there might be more opportunities for abuse. We might ask people to do things they wouldn't want to do otherwise. We might try to manipulate people to go in a certain direction. Um, obviously, this tends to be sustainable only in the short term. Uh, if you use these kind of tactics, not you, but if a person uses these kinds of tactics, uh, we can get things done in the shorter term uh, or for as long as that person is in that role and we have some power leverage over them. Uh, but it's not something that they have inside them. There's not, no passion. Uh, they're only doing it because of the authority that you are wielding. Not you, again, <laughs> but the person is wielding. Um, so uh, this is a negative thing. It's not good for organizations. We don't want to use power in this way. All right, that wraps position, personal power, uh, informal, informal leaders. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great day.